Hungarian folk tales. The frog, the mouse, and the sausage. A long time ago, far, far away, there lived a little frog. And the frog met a mouse and a sausage. All three began to talk and they decided to become best friends for life. The mouse did all the cleaning, the frog did all the shopping, and the sausage cooked all the food. And the three friends live like this for a month and a day. The sausage cooked such delicious food that they were always left licking their lips. And no matter how much they ate, it was never enough because the food was so delicious. When the month was over, the sausage said, we should really take turns, so who is going to cook the food instead of me? Why not the frog, they said. So then they made the frog their cook. The frog tried this kind of dish and that kind of dish and that kind of dish and this kind of dish but he could never cook anything the others liked to eat. He carried on cooking for a couple of days, but then they asked him to stop. You are a very bad cook, Frog, they told him. The Frog felt very ashamed. Well then, croak. Who will do the cooking now? So the sausage said, We'll make it the mouse's job. So the mouse became the cook. And it cooked for a couple of days, but it cooked so badly that it asked the sausage, Why don't you cook instead of us? Yes, croak, why don't you cook instead? The frog asked. But the sausage could only say, I had my turn of cooking, and if you don't want to cook, then we'll have to break this friendship up. But they begged and begged the sausage until it finally agreed to cook for a couple of days more. The frog thought it could learn to cook by watching the sausage. Well, when the soup was nearly done, the sausage pulled it aside and when it thought nobody was looking, it jumped into the soup. Aha! Croak! Now I know why the soup tastes so good. Because the sausage always jumps into it first. Now I know how to cook. Then the frog offered to cook for them again. Now I will be the cook, croak. I know how to cook. So the frog put a big pot of water on the stove and made a big fire to get it good and hot. And it cooked it and cooked it. When it thought that the contents of the pot had cooked enough, the frog didn't wait for it to cool, but hopped right into the boiling hot soup. Well, 
The water was so terribly hot that it made the poor frog's skin all slimy and wrinkled. And that is where toads come from. Then the frog had to stop cooking because the hot soup had scalded it so. The mouse and the sausage laughed at the foolish frog when it told them the story and they decided not to be friends any longer. So they all went their separate ways and they all lived happily ever after. Hungarian Folk Tales The poor man's nine hens and one cockerel Once upon a time there lived a poor man and his wife and they had more children than there are holes in a sieve The poor man only possessed two small oxen and he went ploughing with them in the forest every day. He was ploughing there one day when he heard a kind of crying. A big brown bear was wrestling with a tiny rabbit. The poor man laughed heartily when he saw the peculiar sight, but this made the bear very angry indeed. You'll see, poor man, I shall eat you up, oxen, plough and all. This frightened the poor man who said, Oh bear, please don't eat me up, for I have a great number of children, and if I don't plough this field, there won't be any wheat, and then what will the little children eat? Please wait until the end of the day, when my ploughing will be done, and you can come here and eat me up, oxen, plough and all. Very well, the bear said, and it walked off into the forest. So the poor man went on ploughing, but he felt so sad that he did not know what to do with his sorrow. And as he stood feeling sad, a fox appeared. Hey, poor man, why are you so sad? How could I not be? And he told the fox about his promise to the bear. Oh, there's no need to be sad. What will you give me if I help you? Do you have chickens in your yard at home? As a matter of fact, we do. My wife keeps nine hens and a cockerel. Well, if you give them all to me, I shall tell you what to do. I'll happily give them to you, and you can come and collect them later today. Poor man, I shall return this evening and hide behind a big bush. And then, when the big brown bear comes, I will... Do you think that will work? It will. Mm, poor man, I have come to eat you up, oxen, plough and all. Very well, eat me. <coughs> What's that noise, poor man? I don't know. Hunters might be coming with guns to shoot you. Oh, hide me somewhere. I'm so frightened. Here's a sack. Hide in here. So the bear hopped into the sack without a second word and the poor man tied the sack tight. Then the fox came out from behind the big bush.
and he began to feel the sack. What's in the sack, poor man? Nothing but a big noggin of firewood. I don't believe it. But that's what's inside. Well, if it is a noggin as you say, chop it with your axe. So then the poor man hit the sack hard with his axe and the big brown bear was killed in an instant. Well then, poor man, you promised to give me nine hens and a cockerel and I shall go to collect them later tonight. So the poor man went home, unharnessed his oxen, went into the house, ate his supper and went to his bed for the night. All of a sudden, he heard a knocking on the door. Who's there? Tis I, the fox. I've come to collect my nine hens and a cockerel. Very well. Wait until I get up and put my trousers on. But the poor man had no intention of dressing, and instead he said to his children, Bark, children, bark! Woof, 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 woof. What was that? We forgot to lock our door before we went to bed and all the dogs came in from the yard to sleep under our bed. Now they can smell a fox and they want to eat you up. Oh, 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 hold them, poor man, let me run away. Bark louder. Woof, 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 woof. See, Fox, I have learned something from you after all, said the poor man. And he turned to the wall and fell fast asleep. And he and his wife and all their children lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a rich man. One day, one of the rich man's farms burned to the ground and nothing was left but a pile of smoking embers. The rich man had made his fortune as a moneylender and one of his unhappy borrowers had burned his home down. The rich man felt terribly sad and not even the priest could comfort him, as he was sure the man would eventually go to hell because of the cruel way he had made money all his life. That may well be true, the rich man thought. But if someone should burn down my other farm, how will my three sons survive? The rich man thought and thought about this until he decided to find all three a job. He made the eldest son a soldier, because he was very bright. He made the middle son a blacksmith's apprentice. And then he spoke to the youngest of his three sons and said, I think you will make a fine barber, son of mine. 
The youngest son had no objections and all three agreed to do their father's bidding as anything was better than working the land. The eldest liked the idea of marching around with a silver sword by his side, while the other two were happy that they would not have to hoe or mow now that they had proper trades. The years passed by and the rich man became old, although he had never been a young man, and he spent all his time thinking how he could one day avoid Hell's fiery furnace that had been promised to him by the priest. But the rich man's three sons did not have a care in the world. His son the soldier danced his days away, while his son the blacksmith and the barber spent all their days making merry. Then the day came when the sons received a letter saying that they should all three return home at once because their father's days were numbered and he wanted to see his sons. So all three sons journeyed home and thought they would soon inherit a fortune from their rich father. When they arrived, the rich man asked his son the soldier, Well, my son, what manner of soldier have you become? Well, my father, the emperor has no finer soldier than I, and I wield a silver sword like no other. The other day, it began to rain while we were on parade, and all the other soldiers got wet, but not I, because I drew my sword and span it around so swiftly above my head that I remained dry. The rich man nodded. I'm glad, my son, that you have become such a fine soldier and I have no need to worry about your fortune. Then he asked the middle son, And you, my son, how do you fare as a blacksmith? Well, my father, there's no finer blacksmith in this land or any other beyond its borders. Only yesterday, a coach passed by the smithy drawn by four grey horses. The Lord driving the coach said that all four horses needed reshoeing, but he had no time to stop. My master stood and scratched his head, but while he stood there, I swiftly shooed all four horses and the coach did not have to stop for a single second. The rich man also noted his middle son's words. You are indeed a master of your trade, my son, and I have no need to worry about your fortune. And you, my youngest son, are you also a master of your trade? You ask me if I'm a master barber father? Well, nothing proves it better than the fact that I shaved a rabbit clean while it was running yesterday, and I did not cut its soft skin once. The rich man also noted his youngest son's words, and then spoke to all three. I see, my sons, that you all have the skill to make your own fortunes, and you have no need of mine. And so now I can use all of my money to pay myself out of hell's fiery furnace. Then the rich man called the priest, gave him all his money, and told him to give it to the poor. So the rich man's three sons were given nothing for their pains and ran away never to return.